Hello and welcome. In today's video, we will unbox the box. We will take a look at the Zoe inverter and we will program some Foxies. Unboxing. Exciting. No, I never actually knew what's exciting about it. But, uh, uh, unboxing is all the rage. So let's do it. Maybe you guys like it. Parcel from JLC PCB and it contains various things. It's not just unboxing, it's also unwrapping. Yay, Foxies! Check it out. It's got the QCA chip already properly soldered, as I assume. So we will test these in a minute. Next up is previous boards. I don't know how previous boards look. Let's speed this up. Packaging material. And oh yeah, that's new. Newish. This would be the latest revision. Of the Nissan Leaf Gen 3 logic board. Check it out. I've omitted the ESP32 for now. Take a look at these as well. And finally, <coughs> let's bring this over to our next topic, the Zoe Inverter. So yesterday Damien released a um, breakout board video. Today I'm releasing one. But I'm not copying Damien. God forbid. Slice this one open. Oh, that's not populated because there's not much on it. So it's just a breakout board. So I had to order a minimum quantity of five because that's how it is. And um, well, let's get rid of the box. That will allow me to. Populate different connectors, which are otherwise in the way, for different experiments. Jesus Christ, this is wrapped very tightly. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, um, yeah, it's got quite a lot of connections. We've got the gate driver board connection, like a flat flex ribbon thingy. Um, here and I've pre-connected it to the signals as I rang them out and some signals I couldn't identify it and identify and they are just here uh, called pin 10 pin 11 and stuff like that um, then here we've got the connection to the DC DC converter and that's two-sided so this one bloop, which is top which is bottom I think this is bottom this one plugs into the actual uh, board over there DC DC board and then here on top, I can plug in the stock Zoe logic board and then kind of um, measure what uh, voltage levels or PWM or communication or whatever it it passes down to the DC DC converter uh, in order to hopefully be able to replicate that. Um, then here we've got the flat flex ribbon to the exciter inverter. Should we call it that or exciter? Well, yeah, whatever. It's uh, an H bridge. And yeah, but I didn't ring that out at all because it's kind of hard to do. So instead, I will just be playing with it until it works, hopefully. And then here we've got the connection to the outside world connector. And yeah, I just hope this will all fit and I've put it into the right 
spots and all the mounting holes here. Um, let's try that first. All right, uh, the first test board is in. I just soldered uh, the outside world connector and the connector to the gate drivers. And well, we have first success on all six gates. We've got minus seven volts. So the gate drive power supplies have fired up. Right, um, so I'm supplying it with 15 volts. That's for the gate drive board. This has to be generated later on on board somehow from the car's 12 volt um, in some defined manner, probably a boost converter, we'll see. Um, and then I'm also supplying 5 volts from the power supply down there because that actually enables uh, the, the gate drive power. If I shut down the 5 volts, you will see the 15 volts drop out as well. Yeah, and maybe just for some repetition, this inverter has uh, three functional sections. Uh, so we've got the DC-DC converter board um, down here, which connects to the main control board via this 50-way Ernie connector. And then we've got um, the exciter stage down here, which connects with another smaller uh, ribbon cable connector. Um, and then we've got the inverter section up here, which connects to the main board with another 50-way ribbon, which is already plugged in here. And then we have got another Ernie 50-way connector going to the outside world. Um, this one. Resolver and stuff connector. Good. So, now next thing, we are going to try and do some gate driving. So, looking good. I've hooked up the analog discovery to supply both the 5 volts and the 6 PWM signals. And I took a page of Damien's book and hooked up an LED to all of the phase outputs. And as you can see now, they are um, all glowing darkly because of some leakage currents. I don't know. The power supply is not displaying any current draw. So, yeah, it's just some leakage. If I turn on the low side, um, you will find the LED turns off completely. Yellow one gone. If I turn on the high side, it becomes bright. And likewise, the other ones bright, dark, and bright, and dark. Okay, next up is the exciter inverter. And uh, I've hooked up a small inductor to it, which is kind of replaces the motor. Uh, rotor winding inductor and uh, let's give it some PWM. And here we go. We are drawing, I don't know if you can see that, 72 milliamps from the power supply and we are putting 200 milliamps through the inductor. And we always have to increase the duty cycle on both uh, channels here, like one is for that channel, one is for the other channels, and only the parts that overlap generate extra current. So if I increase duty cycle of just one, you see nothing happens here. Now I, I increase the duty cycle of the other one, and you can see the inductor current rising with it. So 2.6 amps through the inductor and drawing 600 milliamps from the power supply. Um, apart from that, I can show you on the screen here. Too lazy for a screen uh, capture now. Um, so we see this uh, weird signal here and that corresponds to an inverted version of PWM1. It just does the same thing, just inverted. And then I've hooked up the scope probes to um, what is presumably current sensor outputs. And you can see one voltage is falling as we increase the duty cycle and the other one is rising. So let's keep it falling, falling, falling. Now they're both at pretty much 2.5. And now we 
we increase and you can see channel 1 is rising channel 2 is falling so two current sensors for the inductor current And then finally I found a signal for the interlock loop. So I've got the interlock shorted now and then whatever we output on this pin is reflected on the pin next to it. And if I re remove the interlock bridge, this no longer comes in. Okay, first adapter board has done its job of testing the various inputs and outputs. And now I've populated the second breakout board with a mini main board and yeah bridged over some 5 volt supplies and I've bridged over the auxiliary PWM uh, to the exciter thingy here tested it all and um, yeah connected up can yeah our little gadget and uh, that lets me communicate all looks well so I think we can go downstairs and test the motor next. And we are spinning some Renault motor. This is 500 RPM on the motor shaft. So the way I've set this up is a small lap supply up here. Supplies 15 volts to the inverter logic. And then the larger power supply down there supplies 60 volts to both the rotor exciter and the main inverter. And then we've got our resolver or well SYN cost chip hooked up here. That went quite well. I installed a divider on the board here, but I will change this later to run it from 4 volts. Uh, so yeah, it does go into some runaway condition. Uh, I have to debug that later on. Like if I increase the speed to 600, it'll suddenly rise to 1000 and you can't stop it. Unless you go into neutral, of course. So yeah, the behavior isn't quite understood, but we are running a crushed what are they called? Brushed? Separately excited AC motor or brushed AC motor? Anyway, something like this. Uh, should we do the torque measuring glove? Everybody likes the torque measuring glove. Yeah, here it comes. And we are seeing an increasing current draw when I glove it. And here it goes away. And just to round it off, the runaway condition is gone now. As always, it was the sink offset being 180 degrees well, off. So now it's running at supposedly 2000 RPM. It could be 1000 RPM also because I've set it to two pole pairs and I think it's probably four pole pairs. So it's miscalculating the motor speed. Anyway, pretty happy with that. Let's stop it. Can we stop it? Can't take it for granted. Zero speed. Yep, we can stop it. Nice. Good. So we have to come up with some intelligence for the exciter current because currently that's got a, it's open loop. So maybe I will just install a PWM current control chip that uses the current sensors as feedback. Um, and yeah, of course, we are going to take advantage of the variable exciter current or the variable rotor field to do, well, field weakening in its actual sense. So we don't have to do any funky offsetting of the stator field but we just actually decrease the rotor current and thereby actually decrease the field and thereby can spin faster 
Good, another mechanical issue is uh, this mini main board is uh, touching the gate drive board. So um, I will see if it does fit with some lower pin header. So otherwise I will just design the logic straight onto what's now the adapter board. Now with that done, let's turn to the CCS controllers. And these have two programmable parts. Uh, one is the small flash uh, down here, which contains the firmware for the QCA chip. And then obviously the SCM32, which contains the actual firmware. And we're flashing the small SPI flash by using this BeagleBone and some Linux software called FlashROM. And that's described in the readme. All right, that's it for today's lab update. So um, as a result, there are 14 Foxies now on the Open Inverter shop. They come pre-configured with a Shudemo CAM protocol. So they will pretty much um, interface directly with an Orion BMS on its Shudemo profile. Just you have to add um, battery voltage to the one of the messages. Um, yes. I didn't have time to demonstrate the Nissan Leaf Gen 3 adapter board now, but um, I will test that later. Maybe I will video it, maybe not. And that will also appear on the shop soon. Um, yeah, then I have been to Augsburg. Um, we were invited to the Linux User Day in Augsburg to talk about our open source CCS implementation. Great to meet Janosch again, and of course it was uh, great to meet Uwe, or also known as Yuhi22, the author of the open source CCS implementation. And also some open inverted forum members, uh, namely Mühlpower and Modellfan. Some German chaps. Yeah, so that was great. Um, great road trip. I didn't film it this time, but um, it went well. Except the battery overheating. And yeah, Uwe made these uh, uh, hoodies. And he forgot to take them back home with him. So now I will be selling these off. I don't know if I put them up on the shop. It's one hoodie size... This is size JH. Oh, M. One hoodie size M. One hoodie size M. Two hoodies size M. All right. Um, I don't know. Just get in touch if you want one. Um, Let's see about the price, 50, 60 euros or something. And then you can show off your open source support. Right, um, Foxy's Zoe. Yeah, that's going into another iteration of, uh, of the design phase. And uh, then that will eventually appear in the shop as well. Good. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.